Hello everyone. Welcome to our new series of videos, designed to help you make the most out of your life experiences. Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. In this tutorial video we will discuss about CyberArk. CyberArk is an information security firm that provides privileged access security solutions to organizations. It specializes in protecting privileged account security, protecting sensitive data, and detecting and responding to cyber threats. The company's solutions provide automated privilege management, secret protection, and privileged account security. If you're seeking to learn more about CyberArk, then you should definitely stay around and watch the complete video series. Here are the topics covered in this video series. Privileged Identities Overview on Vault Onboarding Overview on Cluster Vault Cluster Vault Management Overview on Full Backup Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel to know more about such interesting technologies and watch other videos in our Cyberbrainer channel. For further details contact us at sales at the rate cyberbrainer.com. Now let us get into the video. So before understanding uh, CyberArk or any PAM solution, we should be aware about what are the types of privileged accounts. Okay, so accounts with elevated permissions and access to sensitive informations uh, are termed as the privileged accounts. So let's say for an example, if I log into a server, for an example, I have this AD server or a domain controller, I should say, I just log in here. Let me make it full screen here. Now you can see here, there are a lot of groups. If I go here, let me get rid of it. There are a lot of groups and then, then we have the domain admin group. Now, if we see the description of this particular group here, designated administrator of the domain, that means whichever the uh, users which are added into this, they would have the admin level privileges. Okay, that means the accounts which are added into it or the users which are added into this group would have the admin privileges and can be termed as the privileged account because they would be able to do the admin level activity. So whenever you do some sort of elevated task, let's say if you are rebooting a system, you are running some uh, you know uh, installers, you are running some patches on a server, you are doing some sort of configuration changes, you are adding some member in a system. So that is termed as privileged activities because you are doing some sort of elevated task. So let's say if I'm a member of Intel team, I need to add 10 users in AD. I would be doing that as a part of my daily BAU. But still, if I'm, if I'm not a you know member of AD, I'm a kind of hacker or an intruder to an organization. What I'll do instead of doing some sort of you know uh, uh, legitimate activity, what I would be doing, I would be running some ransomware. I would be doing some uh, sort of you know uh, information stealing. Like I could I could steal the uh, customer data, users' data or maybe running some sort of malware, maybe turning down the entire uh, system itself. So you might have uh, heard about DDoS attack, denial of service attack. So what they, what they does, they you know basically get into your network, understand your uh, network and eventually elevate their permissions. Then once they're able to elevate their permissions, they will basically disrupt the business. So Ultimately, you might have heard that, you know, there is there is the Google uh, was down for some time. The Facebook was down for some time. The LinkedIn page was down for some time. What happens? This is because of the denial of service attacks. Sometimes 
uh, intruders or hackers get hold of the infrastructure and they try to disrupt the service to uh, to you know uh, to impact the uh, companies so this is this is a very known event that we frequently see in day to day life and to safeguard this thing we would see that how exactly we can safeguard all sort of things so now privileged accounts are uh, you know segregated in th three parts first of all elevated personal elevated personal is nothing but let's say if i have a login id let me just open up a notepad guys feel free to stop me in case if you are unable to understand anything feel free to stop me at any moment of time Let's say if I'm an employee of a company XYZ, okay, I have a login ID that they have given to me to log into my system. Let's say that uh, login ID is Ajay. Ajay, uh, Ajay is, the, is, is my domain ID that I used to log in on, on, on my workstation. Okay, I just used to uh, log in on my workstation, see my emails, send emails, maybe uh, doing some application work as well. Like, you know, I'm opening up some Word document, Excel documents, uh, PPTs and all. So this is this is the login ID to, to log into my workstation. Now, also, I'm a Vintel admin. So myself is a Vintel admin. Okay, so I would be doing some sort of elevated work, like, you know, my work could, could be like patching. Maintenance of servers like you know, there is could be some housekeeping that I might be doing uh, If if there is like C drive is full D drive is full or maybe some process are killing the memory There are there could be like n number of things which I might be doing Uninstalling the softwares as well, which are which are no more being used or reinstalling some software updating some patches uh, rebooting the server or maybe you know doing the DR trail as well, wherein we used to you know fail over to the DR side. So this right, could be part and parcel of my day-to-day -day work. So my login ID Ajay will not have all sort of privileges to log in on different different server. Let's say if I used to log in on hundred servers on a daily basis. Okay, so for that I have an elevated personal ID. So it could be. Ajay underscore ADM. Okay, with this Ajay underscore ADM, I would be able to authenticate or log into this hundred servers. Okay, I have a password known to me, and I can I can basically log into hundreds of server. I can do this daily activity done, and uh, and as a part of this elevated access, I I am able to do my daily BAU work. So this is termed as elevated personal, wherein you have personal accounts with elevated personal. Okay, that that means per elevated permissions. That means the password is only known to you. Okay, and it, it is used for privileged operations privileged operations or maybe the elevated operations are one and the same thing wherein you're doing some sort of elevated stuff in your organization. So it could be not just Vintel. It could be Unix as well. Uh, you might have seen that in the Unix. Also, there is a there is a dedicated team for Unix. Uh, there is dedicated team from networks. There is a dedicated team for firewall. There is a dedicated team for DB as well. So we have Unix administrator, network administrator, firewall administrator, database administrator. So there are a lot of administrators which, which perform their day to day work. And accordingly, they would require uh, the elevated access. So in Unix, they might require a root access. In networks, they might require the Cisco enable access. In uh, in firewall, they might some require some sort of access as well, which is which is uh, you know uh, uh, making the configuration changes on the firewall. In database, they might require SA access to do some activity. So in that case, they would eventually be requiring the elevated access. Okay, so this particular user uh, ID would be given to them to, to perform the daily day-to-day -day operations. Then there is a shared accounts. Shared account is something which is the password of this shared account is uh, you know uh, known to many. Let's say if I have a team of ten people in my organization. Okay, I, I have I'm a member of Intel team and I have a team of ten people. Now there is there is an account called Vintel underscore ADM. So this is this is an account uh, called Vintel underscore ADM, and there is a pa password for that. Quarty, very generic password, I would say. Quarty at the rate one two three. 
Now, what happens? Like you might have seen that these people, like you know, uh, the Vintel or the Unix team or the Networks team or the database team, they used to work 24 by 7. Okay, so it's not possible for a single person to uh, you know, to look look after the entire activities. Rather, they work in shift. So let's say there is a patching ongoing. Okay, there are like thousands of server in which the patching needs to be done. So let's say the morning shift does first first phase of the servers, the evening shift does the second phase of the servers, the th the night shift does the last phase of the server. So in order to do so, they might require some credentials to run some patches, maybe some installers, maybe some other files they might need to uh, you know install on the different different servers. So they require some sort of elevated access. Now in some organization, instead of granting the uh, you know elevated personal. I mean, rather than creating a personal ID for each and every member, they go with the shared model. Shared model is something wherein the ID is common to all. Okay, there is a shared shared account like Vintel underscore ADM is a shared account, and the password is also known to all. Okay, so if there are ten people in the Vintel team, the password quartet that it one two three would be known to all of these ten people. Okay, so the problem with this is like if I I have ten people. I would not be able to identify that who has done what. Let's say there is a patching scheduled on days uh, uh, on Monday. Okay. Now instead of running the patches, somebody does some other thing. Okay. He might have a uh, he might have uh, uh, installed some third-party tools. Maybe he has done some sort of uh, you know uh, misconfigurations on the servers. But I will not be able to identify that who has done what because he has logged in onto the server with this Vintel underscore ADM. So there is no traceability what he has done, who has done at what time. You will not be able to identify since we do not have the logs. Uh, you know, we do not have the visual logs like who has the, you know logged into the server. What was the installation that he has done? Instead of patching, he might run some ransomware as well. Okay, so you cannot identify that thing. So this is called the shared personal. Uh, sorry, this is called the shared privileged account. The first is the uh, uh, elevated personal ID. The second is the shared uh, sh shared accounts, wherein the entire team is known about the password. So this is could be this could be from the uh, you know Unix team, Networks team, Oracle team, the database team. Okay, so there could be n number of examples we see in a day to day example. Now this is used for emergency, fire call, disaster recovery, privileged operations. Whatever the type of things you are doing, you would eventually require a shared ID. Then there are called application accounts. Okay, what are application accounts? Let's say for an example, I have a script. Okay, now you can see that this is something custom health report using WMI. So what it is doing? It is basically uh, authenticating to multiple servers. Okay, it is logging to multiple servers and check whether there are some, there there are some services running or not. Okay, so we might we, we might be interested in doing a health checks of multiple server on a day to day basis and uh, check like whether whether the services are up and running, the task scheduler are up and running, whether the this thing uh, there there could be some there some, so, so, should be some sort of uh, auto switch jobs as well which I want to see whether they are up and running just to identify the health status of all these things i might require some script okay now let's say my script is doing okay this is what my script is doing okay so it is basically logging into this thousand servers check each and every uh, uh, server and checking the status for few things let's say there are some things like first is like service i think i lost it Now let's say I have a script. Okay, what it does, it logs into thousands of servers, and it checks few things. It checks the services, whether the services are up and running. It does the housekeeping. Housekeeping is just like you know uh, uh, deleting the temp files which are not needed, or maybe if my C drive is getting full, so it will basically try to archive those files and it will uh, you know free up the space in the C drive. Checking patches whether all patches on all this thousand servers are up to date or not. Okay, then task manager or I would say OS health checks. 
OSL check is nothing but like memory disk space. Uh, disk space. What else we have? Uh, we have a RCP utilization. So these are the very basic checks that it does. Okay. Now to log into this thousand servers, okay, the script needs to first log in into this thousand servers and check these things, okay. If you want to see something under a server, you should have able, to, you should be able to access through that server, okay. So the same needed for a script as well, okay. A script will just uh, run and it will try to authenticate to this thousand server and then it will check the attributes. Now in order to do so in the script, I would require some credentials. Okay, I would require credential. Let's say if it is logged into thousand server, I would I might require a domain uh, user uh, domain account. I would say domain account. I would require username and the password for that. So that username and password I need to specify in this script so that it can log into this thousand server, check these attributes and provide with the result. Okay, this is the normal behavior of any script. That what is the intended person uh, purpose? It should serve that. Now instead of doing it, okay, let's say my script is compromised. So let's say somebody has uh, hacked my system and he can see there is a script lying over there and it has a password or username embedded in that or hard coded in this script and that particular username and password has uh, rights to authenticate to thousands of server and it basically checks this parameter. Okay, now this is this is the you know in a hacker has basically get hold of my script. He has seen my script. He has seen the hard coded credentials and he can see that this is what the script is doing. Okay, now since it is doing instead of checking the service status, it can simply disable that service. Instead of doing the housekeeping uh, thing, he can simply you know uh, he can simply stop stop the housekeeping activity on the script. Instead of doing checking the patches, it might uninstall those patches. Whatever the installed patches are there, he can install uninstall those. Instead of canceling the CPU, CPU, you know, basic OS level checks, it will simply skip those checks. So basically, basically someone who is an intruder or a hacker will try to disrupt the uh, services or maybe, you know, the normal functioning of this thousand servers. Now these thousand servers could be web servers that that could be mailing servers that could be some sort of application servers. So if the servers are not running as appropriate because we are not able to perform the health checks, my complete services would be down and this is termed as DDoS attack. Wherein the complete, uh, you know, uh, complete uh, uh, behavior of my servers is compromised. And it's not just to servers, it could be anything. Let's say if I'm doing some sort of uh, uh, automation on my database or maybe on my uh, uh, on my cloud or maybe on my networks. So if this complete takeover uh, takes place by some hacker or intruder, my services would no more be running as, uh, as such. It would be completely down, okay? So these, these, these accounts which are embedded in those scripts are termed as application accounts. If this application accounts are, uh, uh, you know, uh, compromised, your entire uh, system would be down as well, or maybe your entire infrastructure would be down as well, or whatever the activities, the automation activities you are running in your organization would be down as well. Okay, now what are the privileges or uh, uh, what are the risks associated with the privileged account? They are most powerful accounts in the organization. Let's say if you're authenticating to thousand server, that means your account you're uh, using is very powerful because you're a that gives you access to thousand servers. Access is sensitive information. So let's say if I'm doing a uh, health checks for thousand servers, as I said, that servers could be application server, database server, mailing server, domain controllers. There could be a lot of critical assets that you know we are doing the monitoring for. Rarely changed, known to many. Now let's say there this is my script. And the password I have specified in it, the username password I have specified in, I don't bother much about changing it very much, uh, you know, on a on a very frequently a frequent manner. The same goes for the shared account as well. So if I have a team of 10 people, we would be a bit reluctant in changing the password. And even if you are changing the password, that would be very weak. Okay, what happens? Let's say if I have a, uh, for an example, I have a username. I have a password. Okay. My username is Ajay. Okay. And my password is Quarty123. Okay. 
Now, just to tell you that whenever you uh, set a password, there is a corresponding hash value. Okay, hash value is nothing but the encrypted value of your password. Let's say for party one, two, three, this is the hash value. Okay, this is the hash value. Now, as soon as I change the password, okay, uh, the hash value would uh, the hash value would also be changed. Okay. Now, let's say if I log into this particular system with this uh, username. Okay, I, I log into the system with Ajay. Ajay is a username and the password. Okay, so the hack. Okay, because the hash value sits in the system itself. Okay, there are some uh, the weaker the password. Okay, the weaker the password, the weaker would be the hash value. Okay. Now let's say if the if I have a very guessable password like what at the rate one two three they would be it is easily prone to be attacked okay because we have like lots of attacks like man in the middle attack brute force attack wherein they try to uh, exploit the weaker passwords and try to you know get get hold of the hash value okay so the hacker will only be look uh, looking after this hash value once he gets the hash value he will simply do a PTH attack. ETH attack is something wherein which is called the pass the hash attack. Pass the hash attack is nothing but you are not knowing the password, but you have the hash value. Now, let's say if I have a uh, application accounts, he has basically got hold of the script. He has the application accounts that basically provides access to thousand servers. All he needs to do is just use this hash value and he can authenticate to hundred thousands of servers. He can do whatever he wants to do, like run, running some ransomware, uh, you know, uh, malware, steal some information, disrupt the service, whatever he wants to do, he can do that. So only hash value is needed for him. So in order to do that, what uh, what happens in, in, in PAM, we used to put a very strong password. Even if we are doing any kind of accounts we are using here, like we are using elevated personal, shared accounts, application accounts. So we used to we used to rotate a very complex password in PAM. The cyber act will rotate a very complex password. Let's say if my password is quality at the rate one, two, three as of now, that is having a very weak, weak hash value. But instead of that, if I make a very complex password like this, I'm just putting a very uh, complex password, trying to be a very complex. Now you can see, so this is very complex and it is something not uh, uh, into human readable form either. So even if I want to make it as my own password, I will not be able to do so because it's it's not something very easy to guess. Okay. So firstly, it would have a complex hash value. Secondly, it is not prone to It is not prone to brute force attack because in brute force attack they, they used to uh, exploit with multiple guessable password values. Okay, so this is not a guessable thing. Okay, the guessable thing is like you know I can I can have my name Ajay at the rate one two three as a password, Quarty at the rate one two three as a password. Okay, my hometown like Delhi at the rate one two three as a password. So these are like very guessable values, and this is this is the you know keystroke uh, from uh, from the hackers they used to impose like you know very guessable strings. So accordingly, they can they can get the P, uh, the hash value with them, and accordingly they can they can uh, authenticate with multiple assets. Okay. So once the hash value is available with them, okay, they can authenticate to the all assets of your organization. The ultimate attack attack is the golden ticket attack. Golden ticket is a attack is something wherein you have the entire control over the DC. DC is nothing but the domain controller. Once you have attained a domain controller access, that means you can do anything on the domain controller. You can create some uh, backend accounts. You can you can delete the accounts which are there in, in in the domain controller. You can make some changes in the domain controller. I mean, there could be n number of things. There are n number of possibilities you can do there. So now the first and foremost thing is like how the attack happens. Uh, let's say if you have an organization, you are working uh, in an organization, how the cyber attack would happen. I just tell you an insight about it. Guys, any questions still here? Any questions from anyone? Feel free to let me know. Any doubt, any questions?
is it clear till here guys oh uh, hello ajay yeah uh, we can consider web application account as application account web application account uh, basically you know the the accounts which are uh, termed as application accounts uh, which are embedded in the script so if you see here so applications accounts are basically which are there in the scripts applications uh, you know uh, 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 windows services batch when you say web application accounts uh, web application account is something wherein you interactively make a login okay if i were to log into this google for an example if i were to, because you have some elevated rights available with you and you are interacting with that particular application whether it is uh, you know a web based application or a thick client application which is installed on your system or anything so there is a difference between these two uh, does that answer your query uh, here hello uh, does that answer your query or is still it's a confusion for you uh, can i have the response here please i think we lost him so i was coming to a point here how the attack happens okay what is the core of attack and like like how the attack begins in you know day to day life so i will share you this uh, documents guys after the session so there are two ways of attacks okay first is the insider attack let's say if i have some malicious intent uh, i'm working in an organization and i have some sort of malicious intent i am an employee of an organization i will do an insider attack okay what i'll do i will just log into my system okay i will try to escalate my privileges okay let's say for an example guys feel free to stop me anywhere whenever you feel difficult to understand okay do not keep your questions uh, limited to yourself okay now what is insider attack let's say myself as an employee of a company xyz okay so what i have i have a id called uh, i have a, a user id which i used to log in the system with called ajay okay this is my user id okay now as of now my work is only uh, kind of you know uh, uh, i i am just uh, kind of into monitoring for an example i am doing a monitoring task monitoring is something that i used to log in some some servers and i need to check you know what is the what is the status of this servers where the where there are some key services up and running or not if uh, if there is any kind of flag that needs to be raised i will i will do that okay i'm not happy with my job okay so what i can do somebody gives gives me some sort of amount to check that particular information i can share that information by logging into that server i will share i will capture a snapshot or something i can share that or maybe i can i can share him the user information on from that particular server i log into or maybe what i can do i can he somebody gives me some sort of executables or maybe in case of uh, executables could, could be anything i mean somebody gives me the some sort of executables to be you know uh, uh, to be to be executed in some sort of particular server i i do that okay willingly i get some amount i do that so what happens this will eventually disrupt the business of my organization because i have runs i have executed something malicious on the infrastructure okay now in order to do so what uh, how i will do that particular thing okay first of first and foremost i have a normal user id called ajay i need to elevate my privileges so let's say if i am a domain user i will try to elevate myself maybe uh, you know kind of uh, domain uh, try to get domain rdp access so i can uh, you know access multiple servers of my organization then i will try to elevate to uh, domain admin then further i will try to elevate to uh, you know enterprise admin so this is just like you know i will keep on elevating my access to multiple levels or multiple layers so i can basically access any infrastructure of my organization so this is the footprints of mine that i will basically transfers while doing some sort of malicious 
thing on the organization so or directly i can also execute a few things which is not supposed to be done uh, as a part of my roles and duties uh, somebody gives me some sort of applications or maybe some sort of ransomware executables i just put it in the server it will just uh, try to uh, uh, track the path of, of networks how exactly the servers are deployed what are the key web servers what where exactly the domain controllers are hosted what are the mailing servers whatever the key application servers in my organizations if there are any kind of uh, you know uh, 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 checks like you know we have some sort of uh, vulnerability uh, scanner scanner services are there antivirus scanner services are there i will try to uh, stop them on the key servers so there could be n number of things to disrupt the business this is called the insider attack where the insider is compromised uh, and he is willingly trying to uh, you know uh, bring in the malicious stuff into the infrastructure this is called the insider attack so the ex external attack external attack or external threats are something wherein you can uh, you know uh, unwillingly gets compromised so let's say you get an email this is called phishing attack you all are aware because we are working in an it world we used to get a uh, kinds of uh, you know emailers mass mailers from our organization that do not click on any uh, link without uh, with, uh, without knowing the source of it okay so there could be some phishing uh, uh, email posted on your mailbox you know saying this is kind of urgent issue you need to uh, you need to fill up this form or something you just will uh, unwillingly click on that particular link and some sort of executable gets downloaded now once that executable gets downloaded on the system what happens immediately they will not do anything at all i mean immediately your business will not be disrupted anything will not be done at all there is something called penetration first of all he will try to penetrate your network okay he will try to penetrate into your environment what what exactly are the key landscapes are there how exactly the you know what is what what exactly the network infrastructure that is deployed what are the different different uh, firewalls are there what is the network part to different different key assets like domain controllers mailing servers or maybe other uh, critical assets of your organization okay then they will perform reconnaissance okay reconnaissance is something maybe they can create some sort of uh, different shadow id okay they can basically create one more id wherein they can uh, you know use that as a you know uh, uh, shield to uh, go ahead on on your infrastructure then they will move laterally move laterally in the sense they will keep on escalating themselves and they will move different different ways like they will understand the key lay of the land how exactly the things are there in your organization once they're aware about each and everything they have a blueprint of your organization how the different key assets are deployed they will disrupt the business okay now they are known that this is the domain controller this is the mailing server this is the antivirus application server this is the vulnerability management server this is the scanner services that 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 that, 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 that they are there this is the endpoint uh, endpoint uh, security services are there they will try to sim simply shut down all of them just to avoid any kind of uh, uh, you know checks to be done on systems they will simply uh, uh, stop all of them then they will disrupt the business disrupt the business is nothing but you know stopping the services stopping uh, running some sort of ransomware encrypting the entire data stealing the information of your key customers so this is something called disrupting the business once the entire thing is done they will exfiltrate data exfiltrate data in the sense that they will simply you know uh, uh, import the data whatever is hosted in your environment to themselves so they can they can get to know that what is there in, in inside your organization if there are important stuff like key deals are there some mission critical customer data is there that would be eventually compromised so here ex exactly what is happening we do not have any shield to safeguard the uh, you know uh, the, the, for the for the uh, for the intruder or ex attacker to get inside the network we do not have any shield once we have cyber arc in place okay there there is some sort of uh, shield is over here so as of now it looks very uh, uh, you know weird that you know how cyber arc can prevent these kinds of attack okay so first and foremost is the penetration we need to stop the penetration how the penetration happens okay now let's say i i have a i have logged into my laptop now i want to get into this particular server this is particular as server this is an ad server to get into this ad server i need to have the credentials okay otherwise i will not be able to get in get into this ad server at all, at all okay so in the case of shared ids you might have seen that in the shared of in the we have discussed in the shared ids we have a common password known to uh, many people if this password is compromised let's say if there are 10 people in the team and the password is known to a 11th person or a 12th person 
he would also have access to all the assets that is known that is accessible by this team of 10 people the same happens in the uh, same happens in the organization as well let's say if a wintel team is working on this domain controller they are only aware about the password username and password of this domain controller now 11th person is also having access to this 11th person is also knowing about the password of this domain controller he would also be able to get inside that particular domain controller this is the weakness of a shared account okay now what happens when cyber comes into the picture it won't let you connect through the uh, password okay so there are two things so just coming somebody asked about the web application part i will just try to uh, figure out the uh, difference between the interactive access and non-interactive access so interactive access is something wherein you are personally When you are personally punching username and password, if I were to log into the Gmail, it will prompt me to specify my username and the password. That means it's a kind of interactive authentication. Okay, I have the password string available to me. I have the username available with me. I am personally punching in. Non-interactive access is something that password is not known to me. That means I do not have the password string available. I will simply click on connect discussing about the interactive access and non-interactive access. So interactive access wherein you personally punching your username and password. What is non-interactive access? Non-interactive access when the password is not known to you or it is not shown to you. So let's say if I were to connect to this particular server, for an example, I have this server PWA. Okay, this is up anyways. Okay, let me just open it up. I will explain you uh, everything about it, how to install it, what are the prerequisite, everything I will explain you. But I'm just showing you that how, how what are the things that you can uh... now this is this is the GUI of CyberArk, or I should say the web-based GUI of CyberArk. Let it appear. Yeah. So let's say if I were to connect to a server, okay, uh, let me just open it up. I were to connect to the server. This is the address of the server. Okay, I want to connect to this particular server. I will simply click on connect. It will take me to that server without knowing the password of this particular account this is the account which which is which is created in the server and i want to connect to this server through this account okay i will simply click, click on connect it will take me to the server whatever the activities i'm doing it will be thoroughly recorded as well it would have the visual log logs it will have the audit logs it would have the keystroke logs so here i do not need to know the password that is this is this is something i'm uh, you know doing in un, in 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 an in, uninteractive way because password string or I'm not physically punching the username and password, it will be the cyber app which will punch in the username and password on this target machine, not me. So here, even uh, you know, uh, even if if I have access to this server through cyber app, my password is not known to me. I, even if I try to willingly share the password of this particular thing, I will not be able to do so because the upper two options, basically, basically these are basically that will show you the password of this account. Would be grayed out for me i'm sharing uh, a very normal scenario for an end user the show and copy option would be grayed out and this connect option would be enabled so as of now this uh, environment is not fully built i will try to onboard some account and i will show you how does it work so the basic key idea is is that that i have introduced cyber arc in between okay i have introduced cyber arc layer in between so whenever i want to access anything maybe the database or maybe the server uh, the, the the unix server Intel server or maybe any kind of uh, firewall devices any kind of websites i will simply authenticate to cyber arc first of all 
from CyberArk, I will click on connect. Then CyberArk will connect me to the target machine. It is not me who is knowing the password. It is with the CyberArk, which would be injecting the credentials on the target system. So here we are canceling these things. Credential theft because the password is known to no, no, not known to us. Reconnaissance because we are not having the credentials. We will not be able to create any kind of dummy IDs or shadow IDs on the system. Lateral movement since we are connecting everything from CyberArk. Only the legit access would be given to the cyber from the cyber arc. If, if I'm a Wintel admin, I would only be having access to the Unix Windows servers. If I'm a Unix admin, I would only have the access to the Unix servers. So there is SODs you can you can basically maintain from the uh, cyber arc uh, in place. Privilege escalation. There is no point in doing that privilege escalation at, at all because Okay, once I'm access uh, for for uh, you know getting into a server, let's say this is a domain controller for an example. Okay, I am getting into the domain controller now. Why after reaching to a domain controller, I want to create some sort of uh, privilege escalation. Uh, what I do, let's say if this particular ID is uh, uh, having a domain RDP access, I want to elevate it to the domain uh, domain admin access. I will not be able to do that because there are certain uh, suits in cyber which is like let's say privilege threat analytics. So it will not let me create any kind of additional IDs on the domain controller. It will immediately terminate my session. It will immediately lock down my access and it will just uh, put uh, you know uh, just put me down or maybe you know shut down my access right away. So there is no backdoor entry I could create on any target machine at all because of this. Uh, PTA PTA is a kind of a uh, package from the cyber arc itself through which you can do that. So all of these things that we have discussed which are which could be because of the insider threat or an external threat are being safeguarded by the cyber arc. So now the second thing is that we were discussing about PTH attack. Okay, PTH attacks something wherein you have the weaker passwords. So what happens as soon as I'm done with an activity? Let's say if I connected to this Windows account for example, I have connected to this Windows account. Okay, as of now, you can see the password is sitting in the PAM or cyber. Let me just show you. This is the password of this. Okay, as soon as I'm done with the session, okay, I'm I I have connected to this. I have logged off from this particular server. I'm 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 done with my work. The password would immediately be rotated by cyber. Okay. So there will not be kind of stale hashes, hashes or orphan hashes. Whenever you log into a server, there are some hash values that uh, that resides in it even after you log out. So if somebody get hold of that hash value, your system could be compromised because he is having the hash value to authenticate to that server. What CyberArk does immediately once your session gets over, it will rotate the password. The complex your password would be the complex would be your hash value. So let's say if we are uh, in the conventional way we are using quartet at the rate one two three or maybe or something like uh, QAZ WSX at the rate one two three that are very uh, known password or maybe your uh, company name at the rate one two three or something very guessable password you are making use of. So that would not be the case with CyberArk. It would be very complex password that CyberArk would be generating. That just the example I have shown you. So accordingly, the corresponding hash value would also be very complex. It is. It is. It will not be, uh, you know, a feasible task for an attacker to break that particular hash value. And on top of it, it will not be static hash value. It will keep on changing the hash value because every time you initiate a session, the password would be rotated by CyberArk. So for any PAM solution, okay, be it CyberArk, Beyond Trust, uh, 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 HashiCorp, any 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 PAM solution, there are key two key objectives. First is the session management. Okay, session management is the ability to connect any any target machine. Okay, when I say any, that means I just show you here. Okay, now you can see there are a lot of details here. There is SSH, RDP, PuTTY, RP, 
there is something called uh, telnet to sql plus v sphere as 400 as 390 sql management server studio pta azure portal v sphere web uh, sql server management studio so these are, these are called the target servers or oh, sorry target assets so whatever you want to connect whether it is on prem application like database applications or maybe anything hosted on cloud like azure aws gcp google cloud platform uh, you know this thing uh, ibm cloud platform whatever the thing which are hosted on the cloud your pam solution should be capable of connecting to any any a, a, anything like that okay that is called a session management that you have the capability uh, to connect to any target machine irrespective of what what nature of the target machine so this is called session management session management is nothing but the capability of a spam solution to connect as well as injecting credentials to them okay this is called a session management so whatever the target machine you have or maybe the target assets you want to access through pam you can do so then second is the password management as i told you the the hash thing so it should be capable of rotating the password uh, of any any target system okay so here you can see in pam or pam i always refer because pam is the preferred term it it is uh, pam is something a kind of wider uh, 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 term that is used for all uh, all uh, you know privileged access management so once you are able to understand the pam terminology or the pam controls you would be the the you know uh, the the studying of other pam tools like beyond trust or hashicorp would just be comparative study because you would know the known principles of any pam tool that the session management uh, Uh, password management the application onboarding you would be, would be knowing about everything so the key principles remain the same the only thing is the change in the gui like instead of doing it from the pwa they might have some other tools uh, in thicortex that could be a different tool to do that but the, the 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 goal objective remains the same for any pam the use cases remain the same for any pam pam tool be it cyberarc beyond trust hashicorp anything thicortex it remains the same okay but the use cases that cyberarc performs is the maximum because it has been a top a top uh, pam tool since since last 10 years as per the gartner rating because there are a lot of use cases and user ease and the kind of uh, global footprint that cyberarc makes is not the same with other uh, other pam tools as well so it has been a global leader since last 7 years because of lots of uh, features that cyberarc provides okay in other tools you might not get all the features that cyberarc provides but they are cheaper as compared to cyberarc but if you see the uh, you know the market share of cyberarc it is the maximum all the bfsi domain like you know the the, the pharmaceutical domains are opting the cyberarc only now you can see there are a lot of platform here platforms are nothing but the ability of a cyberarc to rotate the password so whatever you onboard in cyberarc cyberarc is capable of rotating the password for it whatever the things even some things are not available here there is something called marketplace marketplace is basically an offering from cyberarc from which you can check like if somebody something is not appearing in your list over here you can import it, import it from the marketplace so we will discuss this in the later uh, uh, phase of time but marketplace is something an open platform for cyberarc customers to import anything from that particular so this is this is all suits of pam okay i will explain you more in detail about it so we have seen that there are there are types of privileged accounts how the attack happens what are the key objectives of a pam solution like session management and password management okay now uh, we will uh, see that what are the challenges uh, there okay like if 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 there are attack happens in your organization there could be some sort of financial losses brand damage business continuity damage regulatory penalties uh, you might have seen there are audit uh, that comes into your organization like pwc or maybe some uh, kpmg audit like there if they see like you know the pam solution is not deployed as per the norms 
there could be some hefty penalties that they will uh, impose on your organization so it's a kind of mandate for any organization uh, who who's having uh, who are running uh, their businesses in 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 the europe or maybe america or maybe in nowadays in india as well so they have some norms wherein they have to implement a pam solution for sure if they are not abiding to that particular thing there could be hefty penalties imposed on them so these are the day to day news that we used to see that you know that the 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 the, the, the compromise has happened on some organization some you might have heard about a couple of months back there were some sort of ransomware wanna cry bad rabbit that were that was you know they were asking for a hefty uh, ransom in in term in the in the name of cryptocurrency as well so you cannot trace out that you know who has done what you because the, the cryptocurrency is something wherein you cannot trace the person who is receiving that particular amount so that is that is a real time challenge when it comes to you know compromising the credentials and your your attack happens in the organizations you do not have anything rather than paying the hefty ransom to them because anyways you need to resume your businesses as soon as possible you cannot wait for that particular time period uh, to someone uh, you know decrypt your data again and uh, run that up or maybe you will not be able to uh, shut down your assets as well just to avoid that kind of attacks The, the 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 business must go on so that is the reason that you know just to avoid this kind of chances we go with the the, uh, the uh, cyber art deployment or any pam tool deployment so how does the cyber art basically help us to you know uh, uh, to to help uh, in safeguarding all the privileged uh, privileged credentials and what are the different components of cyber art so first and foremost is the enterprise password vault okay now as i as i tell you that there are three types of privileged accounts the first is the personal privileged account then there is a shared privileged account and the third is application privileged account so what is the purpose of cyber arc how cyber arc basically you know get 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 gets help us in terms of safeguarding these credentials so it has different components to do its dedicated task okay so we'll start with the enterprise password vault okay now enterprise password is basically the storage of cyber arc it's a core component of cyber arc wherein everything sits so if i'm integrating like you know 1000 devices maybe if i'm uh, if i'm basically uh, integrating 1000 windows server hundreds of unix servers hundreds of database servers thousands of websites web pages let's say if i have a corporate linkedin page or a facebook page or an instagram page of my organization i want to publish few things on a on a weekly basis so that has to be filtered uh, uh, you know in in such a way that only the legitimate content should should flow let's say if i want to uh, publish my uh, quarter uh, quarter business uh, you know uh, business updates on on the on the linkedin so for that i expect that only the legitimate person should access the linkedin corporate with linkedin page and he should only publish the legitimate content i do not want somebody's Uh, anyone can access the my corporate uh, linkedin page and i can put anything of his choice as uh, because it will ram, damage my brand, brand it will lead to brand damage of my organization so that kind of thing you can easily access through pam uh, you know you you need not to know the password of the link corporate linkedin page it would be the pam which would be holding the credentials for your linkedin uh, page so where exactly it will be stored it will store in the enterprise password vault epb or just the vault so any credentials which are there in your organization that would eventually be sitting in the vault vault is the central repository or the most secure uh, component of cyber arc it's a windows server and it has layers of security i will explain you what are the different layers of security in the vault how exactly it safeguards all your credentials and what are the different uh, you know uh, encryption happens once the password sits in the vault then comes central policy manager central manager uh, policy manager or just cpm is basically again uh, an integral part of pam which performs the password management so whenever the password needs to be rotated it is done through central policy manager let me show you something here so cpm or central policy manager basically is the interface between the target machines and the vault 
Now let's say if I have basically onboarded these particular devices, uh, Unix servers, Oracle servers. Okay, I have onboarded desktop uh, servers as well. I mean, I have the username and password which is sitting in the vault, and I have CPM in between. So what CPM does? CPM will verify the password, whatever the password is there in the vault. It will just try to verify. Uh, let's say if I have root account onboarded in CyberArk. Okay, so it will check whether the password of root, which is created in this Unix server A. Is same as what password it has in the uh, vault. It will just try to validate or verify each and every password. So just in case if the password is not same, it will flag an error that the password is incorrect. So it's a kind of in, uh, interface between the target machines you 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 uh, integrate with CyberArk as well as the vault. It will keep on changing the password as well. Now let's say if there is a 30 days of password policy I have implemented so for in every 30 days the password would be rotated. So once the 30 day period comes up, it will change the password in a very complex manner and it will update the new password in the vault. This is how the CPM works. So there are three things it performs change password, verify password and reconcile password. I will explain you the reconcile one in the later stage because otherwise it would be a bit confusing as of now. So basic thing is verify and change it performs. Then comes Password Vault Web Access. Password Vault Web Access is nothing but an interface of CyberArk, or I would say, uh, you know, this this thing that we have just discussed. This is the Password Vault Web Access. This is simply a URL, or I should say, a dashboard, wherein the users would be able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, do their activities. Like they would be able to see the accounts that they own. They would be able to connect to the target machines. They would be able to retrieve the reports as well. They the administrators can also do some admin level jobs as well. So we will see more in details once we approach this topic PVW. It's a very wide topic. I will tell you what are the different things that you can do with the PVW. Then come privileged session management or PSM. Okay, now we have seen here. I'm just try to understand this thing and feel free to stop me if you're not able to do so. Okay, this is very important. How the escalation happens or how the attack happens. Okay. Let me just try to Okay, I will try to put it in a very simple way. Let's say I have a workstation. I think the spelling is over. Okay. Let's say I have a workstation or I would say if my company laptop is there. I have just entered my ODC. I have a workstation or maybe a laptop. I will just plug in into the LAN cable and I want to access some Windows server. Okay, I will simply Open up MSTSC. MM, this this thing. I will just open up MSTSC. MCST. Okay, I'm unable to recall that name. MSTSC. Yeah. Okay. It will it will come up. I will try to put the IP of that server or maybe the host name of that server, and I will click connect. So it will basically ask me the username and password. Okay. So why this particular window come up once I uh, you know, once I uh, Kept the username and password. That means I have the connectivity to that target system. Okay, I have from my workstation to that target system the TCP 3310, that is the RDP port, is open. Okay, so let's say if the password is compromised for that particular target machine, then that means anyone can get get into the target machine with the credentials. Okay, so this is a normal scenario. Okay, or I would say a kind of vulnerable scenario. Wherein you have a direct connectivity to the target system. That should not be the case. What happens once you once you introduce PAM? So from your workstation, okay, you will first reach to the PSM. Okay. From the PSM, every connectivity is there. So from my workstation, I will not have direct connectivity to any of the target system. Let's say on a daily basis, I access 
thousands of target systems thousands of target systems in the sense i could have a mix and match between unix server windows server database server websites everything from my from uh, from my workstation i used to do that but when cyber comes in place every session happens from the psm psm is nothing but a gem server so from my workstation i will first reach out to this gem server from this gem server the connectivity is established so even if my workstation is compromised let's say if my username and password the, the ad id of mine is compromised i will not be able to exploit any of the target system because any target system i want to access is through the pw so through the cyber arc. first and foremost some hacker uh, if somebody has got access to my username and id or password i would say he will not be able to uh, you know uh, log into the uh, uh, pwa or cyber arc. reason being cyber arc is always protected by two factor authentication so once you provide username and password you would be prompted for the radius challenge or you would be prompted for an otp you would be prompted to acknowledge a call something like that there could be n number of things that you can integrate in cyber arc. so accordingly that 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 you know parameters uh, parameter compromise would not happens once you put the psm in place let me show you how does it look like i will show you the practical things tomorrow i just need to set a few things so that will basically clarify all your doubts as well and then we will basically go ahead with the step by step lab uh, lab thing and i will explain you the prerequisites what are the different different use cases so that will that will uh, that will you know clarify all your doubts and queries okay. now what happens let's say if i am an it person okay i want to access some sort of uh, you know unix server windows server or maybe i am a network guy who used to access this routers and switches i will simply click on connect button here as i own you Okay, now let's say if I want to connect to the server, I am a Wintel guy. I will simply click on this connect button. Once I click on connect, it will take me to the PSM. Okay, the session will reach out to the PSM. Okay, PSM is nothing but a jump server of CyberArk. Okay, so from my workstation to this target system, there is no connectivity at all. If I want to access uh, this Windows server directly using MSTSC, I do not have the 3389 connectivity enabled. It will take me to the PSM first of all. It will retrieve the credentials of the account through which I want to connect to this Windows server and it will inject the credentials into this Windows server. Okay, my session would be established. Whatever I'm doing that would be thoroughly recorded by this PSM. If I'm doing some sort of changes in the server that would be recorded. It would have the visual recordings in, 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 in CyberArk. It would have the audit logs in the CyberArk. It would have the keystroke logins in the CyberArk. So there is no possibility that I can do any kind, any kind of mischievous activity on the target machine at all. Okay. Also, it then re uh, returns the recordings to the vault. So whatever the recording happens to my for my session, it eventually restores the recording to the vault. So in some case, let's say there is some audit comes, they want to review the recording that what I have done before like seven months or eight months or, or an year ago, they can simply play back the recording entirely. If I done anything mischievous, I would be tracked. So this is the part, this is the, pro, uh, you know, uh, the, pro, the, this is the basically the function of the PSM. So, PSM has a counterpart called PSMP. Okay, now if you might have worked as a uh, Unix admin or worked in, in a, a as a Linux admin, you might have seen that we are very much habituated in terms of using the PuTTY. Okay, we do not want to authenticate to any. We are not much uh, comfortable with the GUI. Rather, we are much comfortable with the PuTTY. So through that PSMP, you can simply initiate a PuTTY session and that would be recorded as well. I will show you how does it look like and what are the benefits of using PuTTY and you know uh, how you can basically uh, connect to multiple target ssh based devices with the help of it uh, guys feel free to stop me if any questions are there any queries are there do not hesitate then comes application identity management so as we have discussed in the initial uh, uh, initial uh, initial part of our discussion 
that whatever the hard coded credentials which are there in the scripts okay let's say if i have a script okay there is there is some script let me just come up over here let's say if i have a system a uh, uh, custom health health check script okay now i need to have some credentials to do that work okay so whatever the hard coded credentials in the script they are basically safeguarded by cyberarc as well okay so rather than specifying the hard coded credentials in the script what i'll do i will specify a function call now let's say if my script wants to log into a server to check the status of that server uh, services if the five services let's say there are five services my script used to check to do to, to in order to do so it it will use to authenticate to those server and it will check the status of those five services okay now thus the, the credentials for for those uh, for that server it basically specified in the script now when application and entity management comes into the picture what we will do we will replace the hard coded hard coded credential with a function call so the script will tell cyberarc that now i want the credentials to be given to me because i am i am in process of getting the health checks done so kindly provide me the credential so the cyberarc will provide it the username and password a script can do its job once the job is done the password would be rotated again by the cyberarc so this is the purpose of application identity management to replace the hard coded credentials in the scripts in the scripts would not be having any kind of hard coded credentials it would be then it is a purpose of uh, it is the work of uh, 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 application identity management by cyberarc to replace any hard coded credentials then comes disaster recovery vault so disaster recovery vault is just a mirror image of your enterprise password vault in your in a rare scenario if your vault goes down ideally it is very rare but just in case if your vault if your data center entirely goes down so definitely your vault would also go down in that case there is an automatic failover let's say if middle of the night something happens so for an example we are having some sort of data centers in ukraine and ukraine you as you are aware there is some sort of war zone as of now so let's say if your entire data center got shut down okay it is some sort some sort of uh, uh, you know catastrophic thing happens to your data center your entire data center is is blasted or something happens so how your you know business would be uh, restored how you would be running your business as usual without any issue so you would be having some sort of data centers somewhere in the geographical region of the world and you will have a data uh, disaster recovery vault hosted over there so anything on your production data center goes uh, wrong immediately that failover happens to the dr site there will not be any kind of business impact that is that is likely to occur because you have the dr vault already running it is is it is it is it is replicating each and every bit of your data from your production vault to the dr vault event notification engine is something it is not a component but it is a kind of service that cyberarc runs so whatever the activities are coming in let's say if the dr happens if your production site is down you would be notified on your smtp you would be notified on your outlook that so and so thing has happened and there is some sort of intervention needed from your end if some report is generated it is more of like a mailing service from uh, from from cyberarc then comes on demand privilege manager so this is more of like a segregation of duties as well uh, if you have l1 l2 l3 resources in your team or you, it is primarily a unix component so if you have l1 l2 and l3 resources in your team you do not want an l1 to execute any kind of l2 command or you do not want an l2 to execute an l3 level command you can simply get it whitelisted and blacklisted on the basis of a group and people so the group one people would be entitled to you uh, log in uh, sorry uh, execute only the legitimate commands the group two people would also be only be entitled to uh, log in only legitimate commands okay they will not be able to elevate uh, their access so let's say if a l2 person needs to add someone in the sudoers group sudoers group is just like a local administrator group we have in windows we have sudoers group in unix wherein you can provide the admin level privileges so that l2 person will not be able to do that task because you have blacklisted that command for him or maybe you have blacklisted the path for him he will not be able to perform that sort that, that sort of operation so this is the on demand privilege manager so these are all the components 